The new DLC for Planet Zoo, the Tropical Pack is here. Well, it is almost here because you guys will be able to check it out tomorrow. The official uh, release date is uh, tomorrow. Uh, but thanks to Frontier, I am able to uh, record this video a little bit earlier to show you guys all the things that will be added uh, to the game with this new DLC. So we'll have a look at all the animals, all their babies, some of their animations, as well as all the the building pieces and new uh, plants added to the game with this new pack and there is quite a lot to have a look at as you can see here on the screen uh, this is the zoo that I created using the blueprints and the building pieces from the new pack and in here you can see that there's quite a lot of new stuff uh, so yeah this is Caesar creates welcome back to my channel as always and let's dive in to this new pack it is really exciting I love this new pack so much and again huge thanks to Frontier for providing me with an early access. So let's jump right into it. The first animal that we're going to have a look at is probably my favorite, my personal favorite out of this whole pack and this is the Red River Hawk. Just look at the details on this animal. I mean, okay, it is now right now playing with the box, but all the fur details, all the textures, like all those, I don't know, individual hairs. This is just beautiful and so, so, so detailed. It is amazing, isn't it? I, I just love it. I just love it. I think it's my favorite animal of this new pack. Uh, we are looking at the male right now, so it has a slightly bigger, like, a face with those like uh, bumps in here uh, it is doing the animation for the scratch thing uh, some people were concerned that it will have the same rig as for example the babirusa or the uh, or the warthog but this is not the case by by any means this is totally a new animal with new animations and new uh, things so this was a male uh, let's have a look at the female where we have the female that is for example, in here, and wait till you see the babies up close. So the the female is slightly uh, smaller. Uh, it uh, doesn't have this big like things on the on the head, uh, but it's still really nice. You have several different uh, color variations for them. I mean, there's yellow, orange, and red uh, from what I remember. Uh, here we are looking at uh, the. Uh, this is... oh my god, where was this? This is the red coat. But this is the best thing about this animal. They're babies! They're so adorable! Just look at them! Super, super, super cute. I mean, those small ears in here and just the way it looks. It is so, so nice and still, even if it's uh, such a small animal, there's so, so much detail uh, on this uh, little model. So when it comes to Zoopedia Fox for the Red River Hawk, as you can see, it is least concerned. Uh, as always, those new photos for uh, the new animals from new packs are just so, so breathtaking. It, is, it looks amazing. Uh, when it comes to natural habitat, it of course comes from Africa. Uh, the biomes include the tropical grasslands and aquatic it doesn't need a lot of space uh, when for one you need only need 200 to 300 meters sorry uh, and of course if you have more then you have more uh, requirements when it comes to space uh, defense needs to be great too and it's only need to be one 1.25 meters when it comes to the species data you can have up to 10 of them only one male and one group uh, th this is new the mat maturation rules so uh, this is what uh, the uh, sociality uh, update br brought to the game. So as you can see, there is the matrirenial. So mature males related to alpha become outsiders. So whenever the small male is born and it will become adult, uh, it will be an outsider. So the diff so other uh, pa member pa packs of the uh, members of the pack will just fight it off. It won't happen to females. Uh, when it comes to the relation with humans, it is confident. The guests cannot enter the habitat uh, and uh, it has one to five offspring per mating event. We, we will just go uh, through all those you know most important facts. Uh, when it comes to fun facts there's this, this those are those uh, all the 
uh, enrichment items that it can use quite a lot, uh, I must say. Uh, and the interspecies bonus, just look at that! So many animals and it's so, so cool that it can have this interspecies, interspecies bonus with uh, so many primates and also hippopotamus, like pygmy hippo. Those enclosures could be so, so cool. I've seen them kept uh, with some of the primates in the, in the zoo, so I'm very, very happy that they included that. Here we have the Lar Gibbon, and as you guys can see, it is in fact able to do the brachiation on the vines. Uh, so from now on, we don't need to use the special enrichment items to make those apes uh, brachiate. Uh, I don't know if it will do anything in specific, no, but uh, you, were a you, were, you were able to see that uh, they, it was hanging there. Uh, as you can see right here, we have three different colors of gibbons uh, in the game, so we have the black one in here uh, here's the white one and we also have this like uh, cream uh, maybe it is more like a brownish one uh, in the back so maybe let's have a look at them as well this one is also hanging for us uh, so yeah this is how it looks it is again very very cute uh, very fluffy and uh, it is so so cool that they can use those things actually we have a new blueprint in the game uh, so if you click this you can see that there's this natural bracket frame and you are able to pl place it uh, in your exhibit and uh, you know that those guys will be able to use it so so right now if you will go to uh, your habitat tab and you'll take the new filter the brachiation filter the game will show you all the things on which the uh, animals like uh, Lark Gibbon on Siamang can brachiate uh, so you have the climbable locks the thin ones that are apparently able for the apes uh, for those primates uh, to brachiate on and you have all those you know uh, climbing frames metal climbing frames that were introduced to the game with the uh, conservation pack and this blueprint that we talked about so we've seen the black one that was uh, on the climbing frames we've seen the uh, the uh, brown one and there is also a white one which is right now uh, playing with uh, this curio ball they are so so cute i love their faces they are really really adorable and super well done in the game uh, the color doesn't have anything to do with their gender uh, i think i think that some people think that way but uh, you can have a male that is white you can have a female that is white and so on we also have a baby uh, that is in here and uh, next to it it is so so tiny and even more cute I could look at those huge eyes it is so so nice uh, I don't know because I haven't done too much testing uh, if the color like depends on the parents or not uh, it is colored after its mom uh, so maybe this is have something to do with it but I think that the mom was this like uh, brown color and father was black and here we have the brown one uh, but you know uh, probably you guys will do some testing and <laughs> tell me uh, if uh, the colors have something to do with that or it's just totally totally random. Here we have some Zoopedia facts for uh, the Lar Gibbons. Again, this is such a cute picture. Uh, it is endangered. Uh, when it comes to the natural hab habitat, it comes from Asia, uh, from those regions. The biome is tropical. Uh, it doesn't need a lot of space, but it, it has a quite large climbing requirement. So if you are doing a big group of them, you need to take that into consideration while building for them. Uh, they need quite a high fence for meters uh, they can live in groups up to six where you have five males and five females uh, there is only a dominant pair that is uh, leading the family and breeding uh, all the mature offspring are tolerated in the group so whatever you have the male or a female offspring and they grow up they can all stay in the habitats uh, they are conf confident with humans but the humans cannot enter the habitat uh, and they have one offspring per mating even uh, you have quite a lot of enrichment items that you can use for those guys as you can see here uh, and they have enrichment uh, and en en interspecies enrichment with the Asian small cloth otter the or orangutan and the siamang uh, so we can basically have those guys all living together in one big habitat 
Here we have the Asian water monitor and as you guys can see it is deep diving. I just love those guys so much like the details on the scales on the eyes like the way how it how it moves. Frontier always does such an amazing job with their reptiles. I mean this is just amazing. It almost looks real uh, and I love this guy so much. Like look right now when it is in the sun how well it is all here designed. Uh, so those guys uh, as you guys can see can dip, deep dive. This is the male. The male is slightly bigger than a female. They can actually use these things which is really cool. They are just coming here and chilling. We have a female in here uh, so uh, the female looks basically the same but it is uh, a bit smaller uh, they also have some different colorations and we also have some babies maybe we'll be able to see a baby that is yes it is here uh, out there uh, so the baby is really cute it has those really big uh, eyes uh, and it is very long and thin uh, but I I really love it I really love this animal I know that some of you were not happy with it uh, you know uh, if it, with it being added in this pack but I think that it is totally amazing uh, it's so nice to have another reptile that is not a crocodilian and uh, we have a big lizard and in fact I don't think that this is the same rig as the Nile monitor I may be wrong because I haven't tested it uh, and they can use quite a lot of uh, enrichment items uh they uh they just they are just such an interesting animal uh i mean we probably will see it move a little bit around they also have this long long like uh tongue that they are sticking out uh from time to time and yeah it's so so amazing so when it comes to the Zoopedia facts for the Asian water monitor, this is probably my favorite picture out of all the pictures that we have in this pack. Uh, it is least concerned, uh, it lives in Asia, in this region, uh, the biomes are tropical, grasslands and aquatic. It doesn't need uh, a lot of space but it needs a lot of uh, water in the habitat so you need to take that into consideration. It also doesn't need a high barrier uh, so you can have only two of them in one habitat one male and one female they are solitary so all the offspring that mature become outsiders uh, they are confident with humans but the humans of course cannot enter the habitat uh, they have two uh, or up to up from two up to eight uh, offspring per mating event uh, they have quite a lot of enrichment items that they can use this is really really like nice to see uh, and they don't have any interspecies enrichment so let's have a look at the male once again one uh, while it is dry it is out of the water and it really has this like real nice like shiny effect from uh, like several uh, angles and so on so I really really like this animal and I'm really happy that it was added so uh, here are the babies once again and let's move on to another animal Let's take a quick break from the habitat animals because I couldn't wait to show you guys the brown throat sloth. And just look how it is chilling in there in this basket. This is totally like amazing. Like it looks so, so funny. Uh, like it is just having the time of its life, like lying in this basket, like looking at the guests that are in here, just, you know, chilling, not being bothered by anything. And I, like, I totally relate to that. This is just, you know, me standing and people like you know not giving a damn about anything uh, so yeah this is the new walkthrough exhibit for the brown throat sloth uh, we can have up to six of them in here uh, they have quite a lot of climbing enrichment so this all comes with uh, the uh, comes with the if you will put uh, sloth inside of the exhibit this is all you have and you have of course some enrichment items that you can add so there are some uh, places this is for example an enrichment item there are some places of course Again, those are looped animations, just as all the exhibit animals. But some of the sloths are actually able to move. Uh, we maybe this one is moving. I don't know because uh, when they are spawned on those poles in here, they are actually going uh, this way and uh, and another way and so on. Uh, we cannot see it right now, but I've seen some one moving in here, one moving I think here. Then there was was this one, you know, uh, just going from one up uh, one. Uh, and to another and this is so cool because they're actually moving a bit they also have this 
cute, like heat lamp in here, which is also totally amazing. I wish that we actually got this as a, you know, piece that we can use. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is just, you know, uh, sunbathing, chilling in here. Uh, those just look at uh, and act like normal sloths in zoos. I don't know if you guys ever saw a sloth in a zoo, but if you'll see them, this is how you will just see them basically they're just you know in one place looking at one spot not moving too much and uh, maybe just you know moving their heads their hands a bit but i am not mad at all that they are in fact an uh a walkthrough exhibit animal because it, i think it makes a total sense for them this one is also doing a really nice pose in here looking at this guy down there that is just laying their chin this is my favorite thing about this uh this whole you know uh walkthrough exhibit with this stuff this guy just, you know, having time of his life on the, this mask and just laying. This is so, so good. Uh, so yeah, this is how it looks. Of course, uh, we can, uh, if we click on the walkthrough exhibit, uh, you have some things that you can add and uh, customize. So there's a layout. You, for example, have this like browse holder. I think it is in here. Yeah, so there was uh, the leaves that can, they can eat. You have the uh, food bowl, water dish and... Uh, climbing pose for them, so I probably did something to one of the slots that was on it. Uh, I don't know what it was spawn, uh, but you also have the basking light, you have the hanging chair, and you have a sloth nest, which is also really interesting. Uh, it is in here, I think. Yes, so this guy was just, you know, teleported to the sloth nest. And look how it is, like, sleeping. This is also so adorable. I just love those guys so much. I, I love them totally, totally love them. And I cannot wait to build something more, like, detailed for it. By the way, this is the, uh, like, uh, walkthrough exhibit for the sloths. The blueprint that you can use using, uh, it uses a lot of the uh, climbing, uh, not climbing, of building, uh, you know, uh, materials from the new pack. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at the Zoopedia facts for the sloth. So when it comes to the brown throat sloth, they are least concerned. Uh, they come from South and Central America, from the tropical biome, of course. They are living in walkthrough exhibits. Uh, you can have uh, one up to six in one exhibit. Usually in the zoos, I think you have one or two. So six feels like quite a lot, but if you want it, why not? Uh, they have one offspring per mating event. Uh, the uh, offspring is not, mm, you know, different from the adult ones. So if they'll give birth to an offspring, this is just another one appearing in there you don't have babies if you are wondering uh, you have of course the, some research for them to be done so this is the fun fact that you are researching for them and of course the exhibit enrichments and it doesn't have any interspecies enrichment so this was all when it comes to the sloth let's have a look at this guy once more because i just love it so much oh my god okay let's move to uh, the last animal Last but certainly not least, here we have the Fusa, a very interesting and a very beautiful animal that loves to climb, as you guys can see. Uh, here we have the female. Uh, the female is a, a bit smaller uh, than a male. I will show you the male in a second. Uh, they love to climb. They always spend uh, so much time here on those climbing frames. By the way, this is from the workshop. Uh, I will put the link down in the description if you guys would like to use this climbing frame. Uh, uh, they are beautiful. Their eyes are so well done. They just look like umbers. Uh, and of course, they have so many very unique uh, features to themselves because this is uh, not an animal that we had in the game uh, before. We didn't have any of its kind. Uh, this is not a cat. This is not a dog. This is not anything like that. This is from the family of Viriade, if I am correct. Uh, so here we have the female using the climbing frames. Uh, and let's have a look at the male as well. Where are you? Uh, male is slightly bigger, as I told you guys. So uh, he is here. 
Oh, here is going to sleep. Uh, slightly different hat, I think, shape. It is more like, a bit more like aggressive looking, I think. And it is a bit bigger. So uh, here he goes to sleep. I love their bellies, how wide they are. And also look at those paws. They are so, so beautiful, like cute and so on. Uh, but let's have a look at the babies because this is also another very adorable thing. Uh, the babies are small. Uh, they are really, really small. And uh, they have those large ears and large uh, eyes i just love them so much i love this animal very very much i wasn't uh some of you saw that that i wasn't too excited for this animal just because i haven't seen it in a zoo ever i just don't didn't think that this is a very common zoo animal we still have so many common zoo animals that we are missing in the game uh, but looking at it uh, it is totally amazing it looks so so nice doesn't it like one of the most interesting animals that we have in the game. Uh, okay, so here we have the Zoopedia for the Fusa. The Fusa is a vulnerable animal. Uh, it lives in Africa on the Madagascar islands. The biome, of course, is tropical. It doesn't need so much space, like only 270 meters per one. Uh, it does need some climbing, so you need to consider that. Uh, the fence needs to be three meters high. Uh, there can be only two of them in one habitat, so one male and one female. Again, they are solitary, so all mature offspring become outsiders. They are shy. Uh, the guests cannot, they cannot, of course, enter the habitats, and they have two for uh, two up to four offspring per mating event. Uh, those are all the fun facts and uh, quite, again, a lot of uh, different enrichment items you can use for this animal. And it doesn't have any interspecies enrichment, uh, of course. Uh, so yeah, let's have a final look at the baby Fusa and let's move on to all the building pieces that uh, are added with the new uh, tropical pack. Let's have a look at all the building pieces added to the game with the tropical pack, starting with a new wall set. Uh, every time we are getting those uh, new wall sets, uh, they are always coming in the same pieces, the traditional ones. Uh, but this one might be my favorite uh, one ever. Uh, it has some really interesting texture. Uh, of course, we all get the usual pieces, so the walls in all the sizes, the uh, all the arches, the windows and so on uh, they come in default in this like uh, orange color but just look just wait to look uh, to see how they will look uh, when I will change the colors of them I think that this might be my favorite wall it is so like versatile it is so uh, generic it can be used for uh, I don't know animal shelters for buildings in zoos and so on also on the, for those uh, themed areas so those pieces in here are off-grid pieces so we have our usual walls but we also get something like this which is really interesting and we also got some like columns or pillars and now we come to the pieces that uh, you know I just recolored did myself like real quick and we can see how well those walls actually look when you could change the colors into something more like generic like you can see on the uh, regular building so you you basically choose the like a base color and you choose the color of those like markings or anything like that doesn't it look amazing like uh, imagine like a really modern build built from those imagine an older shelter will for those i think that they are suited to uh, a lot of things and i am very very happy with those pieces but let's move on so next up we have the entire mossy stone set those stones come in different shapes and sizes uh, they are really small and really big and so on uh, i really love them we could see them in the uh, trailer for the uh, for the tropical pack uh, those are basically the stone pieces uh, that have this mossy patches on them uh, some of them are really small like this one this is only half meter so i am really happy that they added those smaller pieces uh, there are quite a lot of them uh, and the best thing about them uh, is that they are flexi colors so you can do stuff like that Th this don't doesn't have to be a moss it can be just a dirt or just you know uh, some different coloration on the on the uh, stone so this is also made to use uh, made using the mossy stone block so again very versatile piece that I am sure I'll be using a lot 
Talking about the versatile pieces, here we have the Indonesian stained timber. Uh, so many, many, many timber pieces coming to the game with this new pack. I just love them. Uh, look at that. We have this really small one. Uh, this is the beam cap. We have all those beams in different sizes. We have those uh, bigger like panels of the wood. We have those triangles. We have those like theme, uh, themed planks. We have like a stained timber pole cap and we have those poles which are uh, come into different sizes and those are also flexi color and just look how well it looks when you change uh, the colors of them into something more generic of course you can go crazy with those but if you go for the brownish and uh, you know grayish colors they look amazing and i cannot wait to use them in my builds because i think that they can be used simply for everything uh, next up we have the entire indonesian roof set uh, so we again saw those pieces in the trailer of the tropical pack those are the fat roofs uh, the new set of fat roofs that we saw and uh, there are so many off-grid pieces i think that they are all off-grid which is really interesting uh, you have those in different shapes and sizes you have them those uh, like on two sides one side one side and here and so on uh, you have pieces like that you have those like very peach high uh, roofs uh, and uh, so on you have like uh, pieces like this this is the uh, one piece the smaller version of it you have this like huge thing like this I don't know pitch something you also have those really interesting roofs those are called the uh, top Tokongan roof ends, uh, so it's really interesting. It's this the, the, we have the ends and the middle parts. Uh, we have also uh, this decoration for the roof. This is the Indonesian roof topper, and uh, I am slightly disappointed here because uh, the straw on this is not flexicolor unfortunately i was hoping that it will be uh, but the only part that is flexicolor is the part like underneath so the wooden parts of those uh patch roofs are flexicolor still i think it's just a really nice uh, really nice piece i will be using those uh for sure uh, for example in my desert adventure park i think that they are perfect in there i can see them being used for more like african uh themed uh, like you know sections or or just you know tropical or anything like more themed they will be very suited for here we have the wall decorations some really beautiful and lovely pieces uh, first up we have those uh, tree bark panels those are meant to be you know uh, decorating the the walls or anything like that but i can see them being used for so many things like decorating the uh, habitats decorating simply walls or just using them on the floor and so on then we have the indonesian bamboo panels again really cool pieces uh, to use in your exhibits or just simply you know decorating the more themed uh, areas of your zoo then we have this whole cells or the of the dra draperies draperies uh, so this is the curtains that you have uh, uh, but we also have those really tiny pieces like this knot or uh, the loop or uh, the tie and so on we have those uh, trims uh, we have the white dra draperies and so on uh, then we have the entire set of this like gilded stone swirl uh, and the uh, gilded wooden art so this uh, in default this comes in uh, this like uh golden colors but we also have the entire set that is flexi color which is so so nice like uh, remember when i've built the uh, giraffe house in the elm hill city zoo and i was trying to do uh, like those carved out sculptures using the wooden pieces and i had to use the uh the limestone in the uh in the brown color color right now I would totally use this because look how many different options we have and because uh, this is what I went this is what I've done uh, you know changing the colors into more like wooden uh, ones and this basically looks uh, like a wooden sculpture or anything like that and it is totally beautiful moving on we have this latest uh, thing really nice like putting it next to each other it can look really cool on walls uh, even in those more like modern buildings we have this entire set of the mossy stone flowers so in different sizes we have the like entire one we have the half ones and we have the quarter of of them we also have those decorations 
uh, we have uh, those trims uh, that are really, really nice. We have those like uh, mossy stone trims uh, that are really cool. They are also reflexy color and I can see people using them to create the whole entire new sets of walls and stuff. And we also have this one and we have this knot or anything. This is the straw tassel. Next up, we have the entire set of props. So we have a new drum, the Indonesian drum. Uh, we have the, uh, this is like a pot, another pot, another pot. And then we have the uh, pot with the sticks, like those sand sticks. Uh, we have this like a uh, fence panel. Uh, those are the stained timber fence posts and uh, supports. This is the fence. Of course, this is all flexi color, so we can do whatever you want with it. Uh, this is the uh, Indonesian umbrella, and in this pack, umbrella comes uh, as a uh, construction item. You don't have it as the uh, prop item that can be placed on paths like we had in the previous packs. Uh, then we have those pieces. Those are the packages and the uh, cardboards. Uh, I don't know why, but they don't have a tag for the Tropical DLC, they, but they don't also have the tag for the base game. So I don't know if there's still something like wrong because I am playing in the early access or anything like that, but it was really hard to find them. I found them because uh, they are on this like bicycle prop that I'll show you in the second. And, this and then we come to statues and signs. They are often my favorite thing about the uh, new building pieces. Uh, so we have this like uh, ladder. Uh, oh, this is a trellis, so it is used for your plants to grow on them, uh, really cool. Uh, then we have the entire set of the sculptures, we could see those sculptures in the trailer, uh, but what is cool is that you can basically create your own, so you have the uh, human legs, you have the human torso, and then you can choose what hat you, can, uh, you want to choose for it. So we have the one for the Asian water monitor, the Fusa, the Lark Gibbon, and the Hog. We don't have one for the sloth, but that's okay. Uh, so we can create something like that using those. So yeah, this is really cool. Uh, if you are building more of those like themed zoos or tropical areas, I uh, I totally see them being used. Then we have this entire set for the snake uh, sculpture. Uh, so we have those things uh, and basically you can use them. And we also have this little thing. This is the sculpture topper. Uh, and you can use those things to create a snake statue like that so uh, you just can for example put the uh, uh, asian water monitor head on it and then use those things like add those legs and so on and this is how it looks and then we have of course the statues for or the signs for uh, the animals so we have the one we have two for the uh, asian monitor uh, we have uh, one for the sloth one for the fusa three different ones for the uh, gibbons uh, every different color of the Gibbons gets one statue uh, or the sign which is really cool and one for the hawk and of course we have the reward statue for the Fusa uh, if you go through the campaign and you know do the golden medal we probably will get the bronze one the silver one and the golden one that was all when it comes to the building pieces, but the new pack of course comes with the new path. Uh, so here are the different variants of the path that we get. I really love this path. I think it looks amazing and I can see it being used for like car parks uh, in more like smaller zoos or anything or even inside of some uh, ungulate enclosures. Uh, I think it looks amazing. Uh, so there's the path without the curb. There's a, this is the path with the curb. So they're also a bit mossy. Uh, this is the, curb, the ground path with uh, the railings. The railings are really like nice and themed. Uh, this is the elevated path, elevated path without the railings. We have the sloped path, you have the stairs. Uh, nothing too crazy, they all look uh, more or less the same. And then we have three like uh, path for props or you know just benches. So we have the bench, uh, really themed one, but you can also change the colors of everything as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so you can do it. Uh, we have the uh, bins you can also change the color of this one and we have this really cool table i must say that i really love it it looks amazing and i will be using that for sure in my builds 
And now let's have a look at all the plans that come with this new DLC. There is not a lot of them, but actually quite a lot of those plans come with the free update. So uh, if you like to see the, those, uh, I'm sure that at the time that this video goes live, I'll also have the one covering the free update. So uh, go and check it out. So uh, in this DLC, we have the pitcher plants. This is the Attenborough pitcher plant. We have the small one and the big one. Those are the uh, pitcher simply uh, we have the base for that so uh, you can just you know we have the big and small base you can use them individually as different plants but uh, you can of course attach those here and create something like this we have my favorite plant from this entire DSC the basket fern uh, so the basket ferns they uh, are flat on one side so they are meant to be used on walls on different trees and so on but to be honest you know if uh, those are the three options if you'll combine them and you know uh, do some magic, do some, you know, uh, copying and so on. We can sort of, and sing them to the ground, we can just pretend that this is a normal, like, fern with a really nice uh, texture, so uh, why not do it uh, this way? Uh, this is the Rafflesia flower, really cool. Again, I love those. And we have also this entire set of the vines. This was the, those are the Terristigma vines or something like that. Uh, we have four of different, you know, variants of this and also so I can see it being used in a lot of zoos uh, in different biomes, you know, just on the uh, climbing, on the walls or anything like that. So yeah, this was all when it comes to the plants. And let's see the blueprints uh, that uh, we are given in this new pack. So when it comes to the blueprints, we actually get quite a lot of them in this update. And this is so cool because uh, you can sort of see how you can use those pieces uh, in your own builds or, you know, we can get inspired by them. Uh, so we have a lot of those gates, arches. Uh, this is the... the, the bike that I was telling you about, uh, we have those like temples, shrines, we have those more scenery pieces. By the way, there are some plants, for example, like this one, this vine or this one that are also new, but those come in the free update. So if you like to see them up close, go and check out my uh, free update overview. Uh, we have like those temples, uh, we have those like ruins, like those walls, which are really, really nice. I love this one. Uh, we, this is the shrine. Shrine. This is like a sort of like an Indonesian house or something like that. The aspired roof house. Uh, this is the temple, and we also have this really cool uh, Tonggongan house or something like that. And of course, we have the blueprints for all the uh, you know different. Uh, like staff buildings and so on so we have the blueprints for the staff hut, the keeper huts the uh, quarantine uh like the research centers the staff buildings uh the, this is the trade center the vet clinic uh the workshop those are the shelves for the shops for the gas really cool stuff uh, those are the toilets i just you know uh deleted them because i got the notifications all the time that they are not connected to the paths uh, this is the walkthrough exhibit for the sloth but you can use it for all of the walkthrough animals uh, and this is the entrance to your zoo so yeah those blueprints are really nice i love them and i am so happy that we got so many of them Okay guys, so this is all when it comes to my overview of the Tropical Pack. I must say that I really, really enjoy this pack. I think that the animals are just beautiful, the building pieces are very useful, uh, we have really beautiful new plants uh, and all the new things are just so exciting every time. Uh, so I hope you agree with me, I hope that you are very excited for the new pack uh, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, thanks again to Frontier for providing me with an early access for the new DLC. Okay guys, so this was all when it comes to the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it and if you like to uh, watch more of those uh, from me in the future, uh, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it uh, and of course leave me a nice comment or just tell me what you think about the pack, which animal is your favorite, what you liked the most when it comes to the building pieces and plants. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!